Hello, all. I haven't done a training video in so long. And I'm not talking about a cover. I'm not talking about showing you a lick or something like that or explaining a pattern. I'm talking about a training video for drums in so long that I think I've almost forgotten how to do them. But tonight is a lesson in old school drumming. And I'm going to be showing you two books that I work all of my students out of that are so old, it's ridiculous. But I find that all of the books out there that are out there today don't touch on a lot of these topics. And I'd rather start them, all my students off with a really good foundation, not like every teacher does, but with some old school kind of mentality as well. Because I found that playing way back when, um, the drumming wasn't nearly as complicated as it is today. So consequently, a lot of the techniques that are learned today don't cover the old style of playing uh, that I'm used to or that even was around back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now, you may say that that's too simplistic. Well, I can't say that at all because I found that a lot of the techniques I use are still kind of hidden in today's music, but they're not as predominant as what goes on today. I have two books that I use, and I don't get paid for an advertisement. I don't get any royalties out of this or anything like that. I just believe in these books, and I think you might want to try to experiment with some of them. The first one is one that is so old. This is probably the first, one of the first books that I started back with. And I've been drumming for over 54 years. So this goes back to the late 60s. It's called How to Play Rock and Roll Drums. Very simplistic, very simplistic title. This thing has changed covers, I can tell you, about half a dozen times. But what's in it is still the basics of playing drums. Now, why do I use this book as opposed to other books? This is one of the first books and probably the only one that I know of. And check out this artwork. This artwork is still right out of the 60s kind of stuff. Um, this book is one of the few books that starts off at one drum at a time. You know, when you get thrown into the drum set mix, I don't believe in starting the drum set off right off the bat. You've got to, my theory is you got to get your hands working first and then bring your feet in. So I will start off with like say a Roy Burns book, uh, an elementary book, uh, the blue one the, that's uh, the first book that he has. And then when they reach a certain section in that Roy Burns book, I bring them into the drum set. And I have to tell you, what that does is it gives the student confidence by playing all the hand stuff right off the bat. And then because this book goes into one drum at a time, it doesn't throw the whole gamut of drum set usage to the student and get them confused because let's face it for a while they're using only their hands this starts off gradually using the feet and the hands together check this out this is actually page six um and it says adding the snare drum notice it's only a snare drum and bass drum and it has exercises in there that are snare drum Snare drum and bass drum. And then their first taste of using 
their rock and roll technique for snare for a drum set. And that's in here. It gives you four on the floor and then two and four on the snare drum. They don't worry about the hi-hat and they don't worry about the cymbal right off the bat. They get the hands and feet get coordinated together and they're doing very basic stuff. And that very basic stuff lasts for uh, quite a little bit. Doing different patterns with just the two, doing doubles with the hands and singles with the feet. And each time it does this, it reinforces just the snare drum and bass drum, unifying them together. And what's really kind of nice, on page 10, they have something called rock and roll choruses. These choruses are little mini tunes that you play as a drummer. As an example, this is rock and roll chorus number three. That's 12 bars of them playing, kind of like a mini little tune. And if you notice, the last bar with the kind of was a, it could be explained like a fill measure that breaks away from the pattern. And that talks to you about transitions. Doesn't list, doesn't list it there, but it plays it like transitions from one, one four bar phrase to the next. This goes on for a while, and then it goes into the skill builders, like the the uh, all of the um, uh, you know some of the hand multiple hands things and stuff like that, and it actually goes into accents, and then lo and behold, on page fourteen, it brings in the ride symbol. So now we're starting to get three limb independence, and it starts off with just the ride cymbal, ride cymbal and bass drum, ride cymbal and snare drum, all three going at the same time. This method book of coming in one after another and adding one instrument after another eases the student into the drum set rather than throwing them and say, it's kind of like, you know how when they used to say, um, uh, throw someone off a pier and that'll teach them how to swim? Nah, that's the kind of uh, the agitated version of it. I'd rather have them wade into the drum set and get comfortable with it and then progress on. So this is one of my favorite books. I have to tell you, this book has, like I said, has had so many covers that I can't even tell you what it's going to look like. I think that's the last cover that, that's on there, so you might find that if you choose to buy it. The second, my second favorite book, and actually it turns into a lot of my students' favorite book, is it's kind of a funk book, but it's not really a funk book. It's called The Drummer's Cookbook. And the cookbook is snare drum and bass drum patterns. No cymbals or anything like that. Just snare drum and bass drum patterns. But I have them add and do these exercises a couple of different ways. We start off, it has a, uh, in chapter one, it does have a hi-hat added or a ride cymbal. And these are one measure phrases that everyone does to get all three limbs moving together in kind of a funky kind of dance pattern. Uh, let me give you an example. That's one measure and you do it, you, you know, you give them, give them the, the actually do this over and over until they get confident with it. 
Um, you do it maybe three or four times and you move down the list. And let me show you what the pattern is and how the book actually works. Now, as you can see, this is a more advanced book, but it gives you kind of a nice funky kind of groove between the bass drum and snare drum and cymbal. You hear how it's moving in different patterns. Each one of those was a different pattern that gets worked on and mastered between the hands and the foot using the same kind of groove. Now, you can take this thing slow or you can take this thing fast, but they've got to be able to master the groove in order to, and it really does hit smack of a real solid groove when you, you start hearing in your head because it's all 16th based now something that i do with this book that i don't know a lot of drummers do or a lot of teachers do is what i you were hearing was what i called straight i also have them do what's called a cross pattern which means we turn it into 16th with alternating 16th playing the same pattern. You do the exact same pattern with this type of sticking going on and it gives you not only the right feel but it teaches this type of movement between your hi-hat, your snare drum, and your bass drum. So you can see this is pages and pages of these type exercises. It's all kind of the same groove, but it's alternating snare drum and bass drum patterns to be able to locate the snare drum and bass drum on any beat in any type pattern this way and it creates independence between all three drums between the two drums and the hi-hat and your hands going every which way i have found this book invaluable i can tell you i've been using this book for a really long time in fact, the price on this book cover right here, this is my, I think, my original cover, uh, is $4.95. So that tells you how long that goes on. So what I'm talking about with these two books, these two books are essential books for me. And if you dig any kind of groove drumming or you want to start either with the start playing drums or really getting into groove drumming, um, this is called... The first one is called How to Play Rock and Roll Drums by Palmer and Hughes. It's from the Alfred Music Publishing Company. And the second one is from Mel Bay. It's called The Drummer's Cookbook by John Pickering. Take that as advice. Try these books out. Like I said, I don't make anything from them. I just believe in these books. And if you ask any one of my students who have used all these books, they really enjoy them and they find out that they're very well versed and they've learned to really come on strong with the help of these two books. So thanks again. That's my first drum lesson, if you want to call it that, uh, of this new year. And I hope to see you again soon.